This example says for what values of p does the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p power dx converge? When it does converge, what is its value? I've gone ahead here and rewritten my integrand as x to the negative p power. So here we're going to go ahead and break our scenario up into two cases. And the first case that I want to investigate is what if p was equal to 1 in this scenario? So if p was equal to 1, then we could write our improper integral as the integral from 1 to infinity of x to the negative 1 power dx. And because this is an improper integral, it would probably be helpful to rewrite this using a limit. So I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b of x to the negative 1 power dx. And if I take the antiderivative of x to the negative 1 power, I get the natural log of the absolute value of x. And we are evaluating this expression from x equals 1 to x equals b. Okay, so now if we plug in these values, we get the natural log of the absolute value of b minus the natural log of the absolute value of 1. And the natural log of 1 is 0, so this ends up becoming the limit as b approaches infinity of the natural log of the absolute value of b. And this thing approaches infinity as b approaches infinity, so this limit is equal to infinity here. All right, so that was the case when p equals 1. We found that the improper integral diverges. Now let's consider the case where p is not equal to 1. And the reason that we're breaking it up into these two cases is because when we have x to the negative 1 power, our antiderivative is different than for any other power. What do I mean by that? Well, now we have the improper integral from 1 to infinity of x to the negative p power. And since we know that p is not equal to 1, if we wanted to take the antiderivative of our integrand, we could use the power rule for integrals. So this is equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b of x to the negative p power dx. And then this is equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of... Now, because I can use the power rule, I am going to take my x to the negative p, increase my exponent by 1, and then divide by my new power. And we are evaluating this from x equals 1 to x equals b. Okay. So from here, I'm going to write that expression. I have a fraction there, and I'm going to write it slightly differently. So now I have the limit as b approaches infinity of... I can break this up into two fractions, and my first fraction is going to be 1 over my denominator, and I'm just going to swap the terms. So instead of having negative p plus 1, I'm going to have 1 minus p in the denominator. And then... Because I have x to the negative p plus 1 power, if I multiplied the exponent by negative 1, I could move that thing into my denominator. So I could rewrite that as 1 over x to the power of, and then negative p plus 1, if I multiply that by negative 1, that would give me p minus 1. And I'm still evaluating this between x equals 1 and x equals b. I'm going to go ahead and section that off. Okay. So let's go ahead and plug in our limits of integration. 
So if you'll notice, 1 over 1 minus p is a constant in the eyes of the limit. p is not being affected by the limit, so I'm going to factor out 1 over 1 minus p, and now essentially what we're doing is we're taking x equals b and x equals 1 and plugging it in for x there. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have 1 over b to the p minus 1 power minus, if I replaced x with 1, I would have 1 to the p minus 1 power, which is, that's going to end up equaling 1. So if we're trying to evaluate the limit at this point, it turns out that this limit is actually a piecewise function and is the limit value is dependent on what p is. And right now we just know that p is not equal to 1. But let me highlight here, my exponent down here is p minus 1. And so if that exponent p, mi p minus 1 is a positive number, then I would have b to some positive power in the denominator, and that would get very, very large, and so the entire fraction would go to 0. And if that entire fraction went to 0, then I would end up having 1 over 1 minus p times 0 minus 1, and so essentially I'm taking 1 over 1 minus p and multiplying that by negative 1, which I could also rewrite that as 1 over p minus 1 as an alternative. So let me go ahead and erase this, and again, our limit here is equal to, we just said that if our exponent was positive, that's going to happen if p is greater than 1, then our limit will go off to 1 over p minus 1. Now the alternative case we can explore is if p is less than 1. And if that's the case, what's going to happen is I would have something like 1 over b to the negative fourth power, and that's the same thing as b to the fourth power. And so this whole fraction here would go off to infinity if the exponent was negative. So all of that is to say if our original p-value is less than 1, then this limit is going to be going off to infinity. So going back and exploring our original improper integral, it turns out that we have two different cases. And so here we said if p was equal to 1, then the improper integral would diverge, and if p was less than 1, it would also diverge. So we can say that this improper integral diverges and goes off to infinity if p is less than or equal to 1. Now, if p is greater than 1, then our improper integral will converge, and it will converge to 1 over p minus 1. And so here we have our final answer. I'm just going to go ahead and box this. And that is our answer.